He's the leading rebounder on this Cougars team, but they do get a couple of key pieces back today. Trevin Nell being one of them. He missed the Iowa State game last week, but he is the Cougs' top three-point shooter. Your officials tonight, Brett Smith, Tyler Kump, and Chris Merlo. We are underway. Texas Tech and the home whites control the opening tip. Ball movement, a lot of pick and rolls, two really solid guards in Pop Isaacs and Joe Toussaint. Here's Toussaint, six and white. Had a game winner against Kansas State in this building last week, but he comes up short, first miss, corralled by Spencer Johnson. Now this BYU team gets it up quickly. They will shoot the three off the break, and then they'll spread it out, go five out with this terrific passing big guy, Ali Khalifa. Here's Jackson Robinson, two and black, leading scorer for the Cougs. Now Johnson had it blocked by Kerwin Walton. A rebound, Dallin Hall out to Robinson. Three is good. Terrific. You're going to see terrific guard play today from sophomore Dallin Hall. And Jackson Robinson, a two-time transfer from Texas A&M and Arkansas. Second year in the program, very good scorer. Grant McCaslin telling us he has shooter written all over him. He's got the green light. Here's Isaacs, two and white. A little runner off the glass, too strong. Offensive rebound, Darian Williams can't get it to go. It's out of bounds, BYU ball. The BYU starters, as we mentioned, no Noah Waterman, but you got Richie Saunders making his first start of the season in place of him. They have a team, when they're healthy, they go 10 or 11 deep, Rich. They're not completely healthy right now, but Richie Saunders is a very good player. Look at that pass. Here's Johnson. His first two of the game coming off a 28-point effort against Iowa State. Right off the bat, you can see that ball movement from outside to in and back out. Opens up the drive. Well done. Toussaint playing in his 150th game as a collegiate. Now Williams, mid-post. Ten on the shot clock. Five to shoot. Isaacs does. And it's an air ball. Toussaint tried to save it. It goes out of bounds, but it's a shot clock violation. Watch the ball movement now. You'll see. We, we talk about this. The ball sings when it comes to BYU. There's the back cut. And watch the inside out. And that opens up the drive off of a hard closeout to get out to those shooters. Rich, the reason they shoot so well inside the arc is because pe people have to play them outside the arc and take away the three ball. They average 33 three-point attempts a game. Here's Johnson. Out to Khalifa. He could shoot it off the mark. And it's one and done for BYU. An early 5-0 BYU lead. That lob to Warren Washington off the mark, out of bounds. Pop Isaacs sporting that Band-Aid over his left eye. Suffered a, a cut in that heavyweight bout this With past week in Houston. Four stitches, uh, inadvertent uh, a whack of the eye, eyebrow by Jamal Shedd. Jamal he, uh, apologized to him later, inadvertent, but uh, Pop bandaged up pretty good. Pop's averaging 18 a game over his last eight games, Rich, so he's been really playing well. He's actually averaging 19 a game. Sophomore from Las Vegas. Here's Washington. Mid-range jumper, maybe a little out of his range. And here come the Cougs. Khalifa trying a three again, and it's good this time. Ali Khalifa known more for his assists than his scoring, but he's got three, and Grant McCaslin calls timeout. Ali Khalifa only. Rich Hollenberg, we have a final from Morgantown, and West Virginia has upset Number three, Kansas. It's crazy. What a crazy league. It's been another crazy day. Iowa State goes into TCU and wins. Oklahoma wins at Cincinnati. And the Kansas Jayhawks go into Morgantown, a place that has snake bit them in the past, and come away with a loss. Four of the five games that have gone final in the Big 12 have been decided by two possessions or fewer. Really good start for the Cougs. Ball moves well. Look at that late pass. Love that. Beautiful How good is that? look. How good is that? They've been doing this all year, Rich. This is awesome. 
This is called a this is called a late curl cut. Watch. He doesn't get it, Saunders, on the initial handoff, and watch him keep going because he knows Khalifa is going to pivot, face the basket, and drop the dime. Th this is total trust right here. Ali Khalifa, Rich, earlier in the year, about two weeks ago, this is unbelievable. He had 42 assists and three turnovers. Now the turnovers have gone up a little bit, but he's averaging almost five assists to every turnover a game. Yeah, still third in the nation in that department. Saunders can't complete the three-point play, but still a 10-0 start for BYU, who averages just 68 points a game on the road, Fran. Of course, inside the Marriott Center, it's over 90 a game for them. Here's Williams for three. Marion Williams, very capable from behind the arc. He is a jack-of-all-trades for Grant McCaslin does it every which way. The ball moves, and the three-pointer doesn't go down for Robinson. Chance for back-to-back -back buckets for the Red Raiders. Underrated defense for BYU. Oh, they're, they're solid, Rich. They're, they got size at every spot. They do a good job on the defensive glass. They're older, they're mature, they're tough. Absolutely underrated. Here's Dallin. And Dallin Hall nails a three. Three different players have hit a triple already for BYU. Dallin Hall is a sophomore who came back from his mission before his freshman year. He will develop into one of the best point guards in the Big 12. So already three triples for one of the most prolific three-point shooting teams in the country. And 20th ranked BYU has a 10-point lead on 25th ranked Texas Tech. So far, when you look at this league and how good it's been, Rich, absolutely a surprise. And they are not the 13th best team in this league based on the preseason poll. No doubt. A win today, and it's back-to-back -back road wins for the first time this year. And maybe even more importantly, in the big picture of BYU, first time in 35 years they win back-to-back -back games against top 25 teams. Well, they're building a really good tournament resume, although it's early in the conference play. Oops. That's a rare unforced error for Dallin Hall and OB Texas Tech basketball. Texas Tech is, although the numbers belie what I'm about to tell you, they're not a great offensive team. They have been early, but they hang their hat on defense. That's a good pass right there. Washington oh. with the throwdown. Pick and roll, and that was a concern of BYU. You don't want Warren Washington to ball screen and get behind the defense. He's a high-energy big. Now watch him open up early and then get behind. I think that's Triore, and you can't let him do that. Rich, that's called, that's called the Spain pick and roll. It's a screen and then a screen for the screener, a guard screen for Washington, and Triore got caught on that second screen. Averaging nearly 10 and 8 a game is Warren Washington in his first season in Lubbock. He completes the three-point play. Good news for Cougs fans. Trevin Nell, 21 in black, on the floor, as is Fus Traore, number 45. Here's Nell with the basketball. Well, all Nell does is make 47% of his threes. Franny's 16 for 28 in three Big 12 games. Six to shoot. Traore. Oh, nice. Pulled his way in, didn't get it to go. Got a good look at the basket. Toussaint. Here's Kerwin Walton. And the rebound to Hall. BYU jumped out to an early 10 0 lead. They lead it by 7, 13 30 to go in the first half. Good defense right here. Robinson, here's Nell's first three. And it's off the mark. Dealing with a left foot injury that kept him out of the Iowa State game earlier this week. Look at this again. Washington almost threw it away, knocked out of bounds by Richie Saunders. Rich, where BYU has struggled this year defensively, and this happened in the second half of the Baylor game, is you want to try to move the ball side to side. So there is no charge timeout, but I didn't see anything. Dallin Hall thought there was something. 
apparently Bert Smith and his crew saw nothing as well. You know what Shakespeare would say, right? Much ado about nothing. <laughs> right. Now again, the key is, look at this, good defense. Here's Spencer. Johnson lost the handle, out of bounds, and Pop Isaacs is adamant that it went off well, Johnson. Well, he's, lu he's lucky because it could have been a foul. We welcome you in for those of you joining us from the West Coast. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fraschilla in Lubbock, Texas, one of three top 25 matchups in college basketball. 20th ranked BYU with a seven point lead on the road against number 25, Texas Tech. Spencer Johnson can't get it to go from the mid range. BYU's gotten off to a very good start. Texas Tech struggled offensively here, first 13 minutes. Toussaint left alone, can't can the three, and Traore has the rebound. Yeah, Coop fans are sad, psyched that uh, Boost Traore is back. He gives them a different element than uh, Noah Waterman, who's out tonight. And we've seen Khalif already dropping dimes. Richie Saunders. That's a tough shot. And Traore picks up the trash. Well, that's what Foos does. Had a terrific year last year in the WCC, been injured in the early part of this year, some, but this BYU team, Rich, lots of depth. Six different Cougars in the scoring column already, That friend. speaks to uh, what we're talking about. The largest lead was 10 for BYU, it's nine right now. That ball tracked down by Saunders. A terrific de uh, defense by Spencer Johnson. All doesn't move quite as well without Khalifa, but it does there. Look at Saunders that. has his second bucket. You know, Mark Pope told us yesterday that he felt Khalifa's passing has rubbed off on the other big guys in uh, uh, Big Foos Traore dropping dimes as well. Net rankings, they're number four. This is a team that is looking to go back to the NCAA tournament. And in the Big 12, you don't necessarily have to be above 500 in league play to do that. No, no. And, uh, of course, the Marriott Center is a great home court as well. Here's Warren Washington, 22 in white. Jump hook out of the timeout, and Washington has an early five. He's been a great addition. He's, this is his fourth school, Rich. Oregon State, Nevada last year, Arizona State. He's been in the NCAA tournament. He's got great energy. He's a great communicator and excellent defensively. Improving offensively. Nice right there. A near open layup for Richie Saunders, recovered by Texas Tech, but the foul is called, and Saunders will go to the line. This, I think Richie, almost, this is one of those rare times he should have gone off one foot. When he went off two feet, which is usually a good play right here, one foot is quicker to the rim, and that allows Walter to come over and foul him. He's going to get the two free throws anyway. Richie Saunders can really score, Rich, first start of the year, but... His teammates know how good a player he is. 75% free throw shooter. He has an early five. Actually played basketball with a guy that's about 15 feet from him right now in high school, Wasatch, Pop Isaacs. They, along with uh, Bruce Traore, were teammates at, teammates at Wasatch Academy. So a little bit of familiarity here today between Richie and uh, Pop Isaacs. And Wasatch has become a prep basketball powerhouse in uh, the stadium. Among, that's right. Uh, they play a national schedule, high-level players. Here's the aforementioned Isaacs stuck under the basket. Spencer Johnson on the breakout. Look how they run. Watch the extra pass. Triple matches his name. The seldom used Townsend triple, averaging just three minutes a game, has three tonight. Walton, he could shoot it as well. well Kerwin Walton, the North Carolina transfer. Did not play much last year, but he has been lights out for Grant McCaslin, especially as a starter. Coming off his best Big 12 game as a Red Raider last time out. Six made threes for Walton. Here's Chance McMillan. 
can't complete the layup. Watch how they spread the floor now. They got one big guy, but it's really a five-out offense. And they play through Khalifa, who will mind you a little bit passing-wise of Jokic. Nell, 0 oh for 2 from 3. Robinson, quick trigger. Boy, these guys have the green light. This is not an aberration. They want to play quick, and they want to take the first good shot. Already the fifth three-pointer for BYU. They lead the nation in three-pointers made. Washington not a shooter, more of a downhill driver. Five on the shot clock. Washington puts it up and in off the window. And the Cougs continue to push the basketball. Off misses and makes, and Robinson has back-to-back -back buckets. He's as good in that mid-range as you'll see in this league, Rich. We say that's not a good shot analytically for Jackson Robinson. He is murder in the mid-range. Oh, and Warren Washington off the feed from Lamar Washington. He just kind of flipped that up and in. And I'm not even sure that Spencer Johnson didn't tip that in. They were right in the vicinity. Look at his shooting. Nell got it. He's back. 47 out of 100 attempts so far this season. Think about that. Came into this contest 62% from three-point range in his last six games. And Chance McMillan says, I'll see your three and match you one. The problem is they don't match him the way BYU does over 40 minutes. Now, again. Wow. BYU fans have seen this before. This is not an accident. This is exactly how this team plays. Trevin Nell, sixth in the nation in three-point percentage coming in. You know, the problem for Texas Tech right now is they cannot win a shootout with this team. They're going to have to play a little more defense. Walton. And Khalifa the rebound. Look at this ball movement. Another open look. Triple short this time. Bodies go flying. And it'll be Texas Tech basketball, 7.08 to go. Yeah, Bridge, this team shoots over 50% of their shots behind the arc. Way with a loss, Rich. Their most difficult six road games are ahead of them. And uh, they've already lost two out of three. They've lost at uh, Central Florida today at West Virginia. And then Oklahoma with a solid win today going into Cincinnati. They'll play Texas Tuesday night. We'll be there. That'll be the game, I think, of the week in the, in the conference. You know, I told you Texas was going to win today before the game, right? You did. The Nostradamus. The, the, no, the psychology of the schedule. You come off the loss to UCF, the Rodney Terry stuff with the, the horns down, at home, desperation, and they beat a good Baylor team. Great coast-to-coast -coast layup by Tyrese Warner, Hunter at the buzzer. And we've been talking. This has been a common thread throughout the whole season. It is tougher to win on the road in the Big 12 than any other conference in basketball. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's the crowds, it's the teams, it's the coaching. It's, uh, you know, it's difficult anywhere, but particularly in this league. Kind of frames how impressive this BYU performance is so far. Yep, so far, 14 minutes. They've played very, very well. Very mature team. Here's Traore. Nice. Using the basket to his advantage. Yes, he did. He put Jennings in jail. By going the other side of the rim. There's no way Jennings can go through the rim and block that shot. And now a 17-point BYU lead. This place is quiet, Rich. Pop Isaacs. His first two of the night. Again, five-out offense. Big guy that can pass it. Shooters. Ball handlers. They've already fired up 15 threes and made seven of them. Seven on the shot clock now for the BYU Cougars. Three to shoot. Traore, push shot. No. Williams grabs the rebound for Tech. Toussaint. Toussaint. 
Isaac's the runner, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Now we talked about Pop Isaacs, the sophomore from Las Vegas, has been very prolific offensively in Big 12 play. Having a really good sophomore season, Rich. Pop Isaacs, seventh in the conference in scoring, just under 17 a game. And he has point number three tonight. What would you like to see this Texas Tech offense do to get back in this game? Stop him on defense. Because if you can stop him on defense, then you, could, you don't have to keep taking the ball out of the net. You can at least get up the court quickly. And then in the half court, spread this defense out and look to drive it more. They're driving not to score, but they're driving to jump stop and pass it out. And I think you've got to attack the rim a little bit more against these guys. But th it starts on this end if you want to get your offense going. And there's the defense from Toussaint, forcing the turnover. Yes, he did, right on cue. Joe Toussaint. Out to Washington. Or that's McMillan off the mark. And the rebound of Treor. And I think defensively, they got to get up into the ball more with a lot more pressure. Great shot fake by Spencer Johnson. Now it's Jackson Robinson from the corner. Good hands by Darian Williams. It'll stay BYU basketball. Well, this is a good sign for BYU. No Noah Waterman tonight, concussion protocol. But you can see the difference Fus Traore makes in their offense, not just with his passing, but his, his job on the glass. Good job by the Red Raiders, staying attached to the shooters. Five on the shot clock. Traore, patient, but it doesn't pay off. Good look, he went left hand that time. Yeah. He's got a good jump hook. He's got a wide base. He can shoot it over Washington. Toussaint, step back three. In and out. And Traore, another rebound. Yep. I don't mind Dallin Hall going under that screen. That's a foul. Already six rebounds for number 45 in black. Foose Traore, who missed the Iowa State game and now Ali Khalifa set to check back in for Traore and Trevin Nell checking back in already with two threes on the night no we're not going to see Waterman we haven't seen a Tiki yet who's also another one of those uh, high energy bigs inside but Khalifa Traore nice tandem be able to rotate those guys every four or five minutes Watch this five-out offense now. They call this guy the Egyptian magician. Khalifa orchestrating. Saunders finishing. That's what he does. He's a dirty work guy, Rich, but he's also a really gifted offensive player. A team high eight for Richie Saunders. And the lead is 15 for the Cougars. Backdoor cut. Washington to McMillan in an and one opportunity. Well, take a look now. We've seen prolific offense on the They've attempted 16 and they've made seven. <laughs> they have five players who've made 25 threes or more this season. You know, almost two a game. And to a man, this is probably the way that Grant McCaslin would like his team to get threes. Drive it, get fouled, and yeah. complete a three-point play like Chance McMillan just did. Now, 12's not insurmountable. You got three and a half to cut into this lead before you go into the locker room at halftime. Look at that back. back, back. Door. Look at this. Look at that. That's Saunders. A, I mean, Pete Carrill would have loved this, man. The great coach at Princeton, the backdoor cuts. The reason they're so effective in the lane with this great passing is because they shoot it so well and you have to guard the three-point line. And that one was through the eye of a needle. Yep, man. sure was. Washington saved it. Here's Walton for three. Big rebound by McMillan and he gets fouled on the way down. Good effort by Zero and White. Chance McMillan. 
Rich, watch this pass right here. He passes it off one hand. It's very typical of the way Coach Kirill used to teach this. The one-hand pass is a quick pass. And so if you put two hands on the ball, it takes a little bit longer. This guy has perfected that one-hand bounce pass on those back cuts. Is it hyperbole to say it's Jokic-esque? Well, there's some of it. Obviously, Jokic to me is the best player in the world right now. Right. Maybe Embiid, you could argue that. But certainly in college, I haven't seen a big man this year pass like him. Pop Isaacs, that set shot three goes. And there you see those uh, numbers as a big guy, great passer. Now, this is a little danger zone now for BYU. Yes, look at this, here we go. Washington takes flight. And the first bit of adversity for number 20, BYU. Washington, and right now, if you are, look at that hustle, there's the pass. If you are BYU, you want to get out of this half with a 10 or more lead. You were up 17, you coughed it up a little bit. Your Texas Tech, more ball pressure. Make the passers uncomfortable. Darian Williams looked like Pat Mahomes with that pass to Washington. Where'd he play college ball? Right here. Oh, that's it. right. An 8-2 Red Raiders run has them back in this contest. Oh, good fake. Khalifa shot fake, wide open three. No. Nice save by Johnson. Out of bounds, BYU basketball. Good job by Warren Washington to chase Khalifa and make him hus hurry up that three. And then good hustle by BYU to keep this ball back. 2.05 to go in the first half. 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Cougs. Last week, Texas Tech trailed Kansas State in this building by 11 at the half. Hall, Saunders. What a first half for Richie Saunders making his first start of the season and making the most of it. When we found out that Noah Waterman was out with a, a concussion protocol, they miss his rebounding. But Richie Saunders gives him four perimeter guys to space around Triore and Khalifa, and he's made the defense pay. A game high 13 for Saunders. Khalifa, the rebound, makes it one and done for Texas Tech. Watch him get out. Watch him make the extra pass, or they need to. Stolen away by McMillan. Jackson Robinson a little too thirsty right there. That ball's got to move. Washington, too strong. Counting down to one minute to go in the first half. Hall with the mismatch over Washington. How about that, man? They don't blink. They don't blink. Texas Tech making a run. You think you'd what's it? What should you usually as a coach? You'd say slow it down. That's not the way they play. The system probably gives Cougar fans a heart attack sometimes, but when they're on, it's fun. Nine for 19 from three for BYU. Pop Isaacs number two has another two. Seven second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And BYU rarely takes a breather. Dallin Hall did just there for a moment. Oh, nice, nice dribble. Look at this. Khalifa, top of the key. Yes, sir. This has been an offensive clinic. Isaacs with time running down. No good. No whistle on the play. And we go to half with number 20 BYU up by 16 on number 25 Texas Tech on the road. We were excited to see how BYU would get the in, and then one more, drive it into the paint, kick it back out, big fella knocking it down. Textbook offensive basketball for 20 minutes. So many weapons for these BYU Cougars, eight different Cougars in the scoring column in the first half, contributing to this 16 point lead as we start the second half BYU and the black unis with the ball now the key now if you're Texas Tech is can you make Khalifa uncomfortable as the playmaker Robinson a guarded three but Saunders who had 13 in the first half got the rebound now another offensive board for BYU remember these guards are all 6'4 and taller and do a really good job on the glass 
underrated as a rebounding team. Tenth in the nation, Fran. And Johnson's an underrated post-up guard. Watch this. Working on Walt. Kicked it out and threw it away. Joe Toussaint scoreless in the first half. Now, same thing for Texas Tech. They've got to spread this defense out and drive it. Baylor really carved up this defense in the second half in Waco. There's a three from Pop Isaacs. Good start. Texas Tech with Walton, Isaacs out there, can both shoot it. McMillan when he comes in. Here's Saunders. Made his first start of the season tonight. And had 13 in the first half. Jackson Robinson off the mark. Khalifa, an offensive board. Now Johnson spots up. No good. Minute and a half in, three offensive rebounds for BYU. Nice pocket pass. Yes. Isaacs to Washington. Yep, and you saw Pop Isaacs break the defense down with dribble penetration and a good find on that roll by Warren Washington. Warren Washington with 13 to lead the Red Raiders. And here they come again. Isaacs to the rim. And Mark Pope doesn't want this thing getting out of control inside the United Supermarkets Arena. When you have a 16-point lead, you know the other team's coming out breathing fire. You have to be prepared for that. There's nothing worse than busting your tail for 20 minutes than giving back half of a lead. So now BYU's got to respond, and I think Texas Tech, quite frankly, with this crowd, is back in this game. The Cougars' largest lead has been 17 earlier in the first half. It has been sliced to nine. Out of the timeout, Khalifa, he had a couple of those in the first half, short on his three-point attempt there. Remember, he's only a 33% deep shooter. Williams. Good defense no. by Khalifa. Rich, that's great wall up right there. Verticality, excellently done. Khalifa. Oh. Air ball. He shot a floater air ball, and luckily he's going to keep it. He's smiling right now. Great dish by Hall. And Khalifa, he was about eight feet away, and unfortunately he shot at about six feet. But uh, Boost Triore back in. They got that rotating two-headed monster. They were smiling on the bench. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> Khalifa was kind of moping to the bench, and his teammates were giving him the business <laughs> for that shot put to nowhere. Here's Hall. Gets it back. Oh, good fake. Yeah, it refuses the screen. Got a mismatch if they go back and attack Washington right here. Traore wants it, but Hall didn't find it. Nice pass. No look, Saunders. Oh, Should have gone up with his right hand. Absolutely, he got spooked by the shot blocker. I would have gone right into his body. The lob. And a foul. They love doing that to Warren Washington, and Washington will go to the line. Yep. Now let's go back and watch this last play, Rich. You see the drive by Hall, and then on this back cut right here by Richie Saunders, I go right into the big fella's body. He tried to go other side of the rim. That's a tougher shot. So Warren Washington, known for his rebounding and his block shots, and he's doing that very well for Grant McCaslin, but he's also producing in the points category. Thought he was excellent against Houston. We've seen him a couple times this year. And Rich, he is a high energy big guy, plays a lot of minutes, and to your point, rapidly improving on the offensive end. And remember, his teammate at Arizona State, Devin Cambridge, was hurt early in the year, and that was a huge loss for this Texas Tech team. Tech down just seven. Hall left alone. Got it. Great ball movement. When you come off a ball screen and the big guy rolls to the basket, he contracts the defense, and Hall's man was on the weak side helping on the roll. Oh, great fake. Isaacs again. Pop Isaacs catching fire. He has 17.
Ten to shoot for the Cougs. Now five. Hall tries again in and out. Just three points for BYU in the first four minutes, Fran. Well, Texas Tech has tightened up the defense, and BYU has given away the lead, Rich. They did not come out with the same intensity defensively. We used to practice the first three minutes of the second half because we never like to take a big lead and then lose it in the locker room. Inside, Treori. Tracked down by Saunders. Kept his pivot foot. Treori, push shot, good. Treori went to school on Khalifa. He wasn't leaving that push shot short. Good effort by Saunders on the glass. We've talked about Richie Saunders scoring, but for this team, when you watch him this year, he does a lot of dirty work around the basket. Joe Toussaint. Surprisingly scoreless in this contest so far. Oh, tough shot. Step back three, no good. And here comes BYU. And Washington snares another rebound. 15 and 6 tonight for Warren Washington. Joe Toussaint gets fouled with 14.42 to go. Well, the Red Raiders have carved uh, a considerable amount of points off that halftime lead, and they're doing it from. But it was bananas all day long. Well, it, it should be, Rich, because the competition in this league from 1 to 14 is probably the best it's ever been. Kansas loses at West Virginia. Iowa almost squanders what a double digit lead and hangs on. And Oklahoma does its job. We're going to be in. Norman on uh, Tuesday to see Texas at Oklahoma and a hey, Sooner fans you've got a great team they're 15 and 3 you got a great coach it would be awesome if you pack Lloyd Noble on Tuesday night and they came up with a big road win in Cincinnati this afternoon Absolutely. and how about we got to talk about Houston Rich yeah what was it seven oh my field goodness. goals for, for UCF they shot UCF <laughs> coming off a big win at Texas shot 16 percent they had almost twice as many turnovers as they did field goals look at that in fact yeah. they had they did have it they had more than twice we saw them on wednesday night beat this texas tech team when houston is playing at their best they overwhelm you defensively they play like they're playing seven on five let's see what the Cougs come out of the timeout with go into treori i like it I like it. Treori, yep. yep. soft touch for the big man. That's good. That's good. Uh, that's good coaching right there. Jennings, a good defender, but he's not Warren Washington. They go right at Foose Treore immediately, and he's a technician around the basket. There's Darian Williams, a matchup nightmare because of his size, and Saunders does a good job getting his hand on the ball and knocking it out of bounds. Watch this, Rich. This is by design. They know Jennings is in the game. They come out and they run a little. Uh, hawk cut inside where they screen for him to the basket and then he's got that jump hook down and You can't get through it. Walton three they, got it. Yep The stake right there Can't leave him open in that weak corner on an inbounds play Kerwin Walton had six threes against Houston. He's got a couple tonight And a foul called on Texas Tech. Watch it. What you cannot leave Walton in the corner. Take a look now. Jackson Robinson falls asleep. Too late. Too late. Boom. Berwin Walton shooting what nearly 50% on the season. Came in 53% yeah. for three. Williams and Jennings to the bench. Washington back on. And Lamar Washington joins him, number one and one. Turnover. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. And Lamar Washington does that. Robinson, too strong to rebound to Warren Washington. Isaacs, look at the shot fake. 
Walton can't pay it off. Here's McMillan again. A 7-0 Red Raider run. The Red Raiders were left for dead in the first half. They are back in it, down by just two. Undefeated at home this season at 10-0. What kind of an answer did the number 20 Cougars have? Paul got all the way to the rim and lost the handle. Good pressure by Toussaint. Dallin Hall drives like you know he's going to pass when I think he's got the angle on Toussaint to try to go up and score it. Khalifa and Nell back on the floor for Mark Pope's Cougars. They've started to shred this half-court defense with guards driving downhill. Toussaint throws it up, can't get it to go. Still scoreless is Joe Toussaint. Khalifa, line drive three, no good. Triple, lands hard on his back after that offensive rebound. Boy, triple hit a big triple in the first half. He did not hit a three this season. Mark Pope's giving him a few more minutes, the freshman from Idaho. Good effort right there, and you see him fouled. Rich, I think he played in one Big 12 game prior to today. And with Waterman out, he's getting some of those minutes. Looks like he knows what he's doing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Khalifa lost it. Triple saves it. Jump ball. And a great effort by Trevin Nell to come away with it. Shot clock still running. Khalifa got it off. Great effort by Triple. What a save. Oh, and it's blocked by Washington. He's like two heavyweights trading haymakers. Khalifa spin move. Good pump fake. Good pump fake. And Washington whistled for his second foul. Smart play. A 17-point game is now a nail-biter. Took it down to the wire before Joe Toussaint had the three-point play and a quick start to the second half. The second half's going to be about poise for BYU. They know what they've squandered. They've got to try to get it back now. Ali Khalifa, just a 50% free throw shooter, knocks the first one down. Our featured ESPN women's basketball matchup tomorrow. Angel Reese and number 10 LSU hosting Arkansas at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. Coverage begins at 5 Eastern. Yeah, late Tigers have a long home streak. Razorbacks coming off a big win against Alabama. Samara Spencer with 31 and 14. My, my man Mike Neighbors, one of the best coaches in uh, in basketball. Nice. Pop Isaacs. What a second half for Isaacs. He has a game high 19. And that's exactly what he's averaged the last eight games. Pressure has bothered BYU's guards to start this second half. It's been harassment. Look at Toussaint. And now foul. Washington all over Khalifa. And the foul's going to be called on Warren Washington, his third. Very aggressive defense, but they got to know the total line, and especially Warren, Warren Washington, who cannot pick up another foul. And when we were talking to Grant McCaslin, that was one of the things he pointed out. He said, we have to make Ali Khalifa uncomfortable and pass the ball up. Here he is, faking the three. Throws it up and gets it to go. He's <laughs> when he gets back to campus, he's going to have to work on that floater, man. He's, <laughs> he's smiling right now, too. You know, you love this kid. I've watched him all season. He plays with a joy for basketball. Nice curl. Isaacs. Can't get that one to go. Hall the rebound for BYU. Townsend triple, 12 and black. Still on the floor for Mark Pope. Nice fake. Two head and shoulder fakes by Khalifa. Yep, and he knows that Washington's got the three fouls, and Washington very judicious about trying to block that shot. Pretty much a conscientious objector on that play. Balanced scoring by the Cougars. 
Up five, coming up on 10 minutes to go in the second half. One of just three top 25 matchups in college basketball this Saturday. Isaacs. The crowd thought he got fouled. So did Pop. Yeah, but I think Pop embellished. Triple. Robinson. Short. And it's tracked down by Isaacs. Good look. Let's see if those guards can get downhill off the dribble. They're trying. Williams off the window. He's that undersized power forward, power wing. Not sure what you call him, but very effective player at 6'5". What was a 17-point advantage for BYU is now a one-possession ball game. Mismatch. Guard on big. Four to shoot. Khalifa knows it, gets it up and in off the glass. Nicely done. Very patient. They had Chance McMillan on Khalifa. They delivered to the rock, and then he took his time. Really effective post-up move by Khalifa. Now Khalifa with 13. And a timeout called by Grant McCaslin. Ali Khalifa asserting himself. One of the few players from the country of Egypt. Watch the floater. So I think the impressive thing about Ali's skill set is it has fit perfectly in with the ball moving, cutting, shooting Cougar teammates this year. So it's Texas Tech ball down five. They trailed by as many as 17 in the first half. Looking to stay perfect at home and improve to 11 and 0. Five on the shot clock. Isaacs working like crazy, but had his pocket pick by Spencer Johnson. And Isaacs returns the favor. Toussaint got it and won. that I wish BYU would do a little better as you see Tucson draw the contact is Spencer Johnson. Watch the pass right here and the finish. And uh, you see how he tried to stay vertical, but then he reached down. But Rich, their guards, particularly Hall and Johnson, they're getting to the basket and they're overpassing. Johnson's a 6'6 guard coming off 28. He gets to the rim. He's got to shoot that ball. And now Khalifa and Nell to the bench. Joe Toussaint, third in the conference in free throw shooting, steps to the line, an 86% free throw shooter. Six foot guard out of the Bronx, Joe Toussaint, completes the three point play. Well, Joe is having, of his five seasons in college, three at Iowa, last year at West Virginia, easily his most efficient season under Grant McCaslin. This is as close as the Red Raiders have been to the lead all evening. If anything, I hate to say it this way, I think the Coons have been too unselfish. Here's Traore. That's a foul. And Toussaint gets whistled for the foul, his first. Yep. We have a timeout on the floor, 7.50 to go, but we've got a two-point game. Six is putting on a clinic here in the second half, young man from Las Vegas, who we're watching grow into one of the Big 12's outstanding guards. By the way, Dalton Connect from Tennessee only had 25 today, Rich. What's wrong and, with him? And the win over Alabama, the transfer, is one of the best. He means the MVP right now, the player of the year in the SEC for Rick Barnes. Here's Traore out of the timeout. Ten on the shot clock. Pop steals it. Gives it up. And we're tied. Too many turnovers.
Well, right now, the Cougs are trying to hit home runs instead of singles. Sloppy play right here, and that leads to the two-on-one, and Isaacs has been so good scoring the ball, dropping it off. 19, 5, and 3 for Pop Isaacs to go along with two steals and a bucket here, and it'll be Texas Tech's first lead of the game. And Washington gives it to him. Richie Saunders took a pop, man. He... So the clock has stopped at 6.58. I don't think they've subbed for him. He said, no, leave me in. He's in that corner holding his head. That's why he's got his head back on. Yeah. Right? The most prolific three-point shooting team in the nation is one for ten in the second half. Saunders. It's gonna be Two a tough to shot. shoot. Yep. Too strong. Big offensive board and a foul called on Texas Tech. That'll go on Darian Williams. Well, what BYU has to do right now, Rich, is get back to spacing the floor and moving the ball five out. They're jumbled up. I get trying to post up the guards, but they've got to get back to spacing and moving the ball and allowing uh, the cuts, the back cuts that lead to open shots on the perimeter. And right now, Khalid is going to come, come back in and try to be the, uh, the generator of that offense. Tall inbounds. Nice. Khalifa. Very good. Yep. Warren Washington cheated out to uh, guard the shooter, and Ali just slipped to the basket. Khalifa's two off his season high. He's got 15. And we're tied again at 64. Pocket pass. Washington lost the handle on the way up. Nice. Khalifa. Again, this is great basketball by Ali Khalifa and a nice dime there by Dallin Hall. And again, I told you this early in the second half for BYU right now. It's about poise. It's an older team. It's a veteran team. They got to play poise. And I think they've switched to either. I think they're going a little bit of a matchup zone right here, Rich. Why are they doing that? Well, play? I think they got to change the tempo of the game. You know, here's Isaacs. Forget about it. Pop goes the three. That's the issue when you throw the curveball and they knock it out of the park. It's Pop's third 20-point game in the Big 12 so far this season. He's got 22, looking to add to it. Nice pass. Well, that's the, the difficulty is that penetration by Texas Tech's guards in the second half. Isaac's down. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay BYU basketball. And Pop Isaacs is gassed. Well, watch Pop Isaacs get into the paint, draw the, the defense, and he's going to just drop this off. Watch. He gets downhill. He gets, that's what we call a hostage dribble. Really nicely done. He kept the guard on his back and created a two-on-one. Flyby. Johnson, no good. Saunders the offensive rebound. And it'll stay Cougars basketball 17 on the shot clock. Well, I told you how tough Richie Saunders is, right? He is a he is a dirty work guy. You know, you love the fact that he can score, but for this team right now without Waterman, he's getting the job done inside. See if they look for Khalifa. He has 11 points in the second half. Mid post, Khalifa spins nice, on Washington. Nice, nice. Oh, he's taking Washington to the cleaners now. And Warren Washington has to play a lot of minutes, Rich. You can see he's fatigued. And Ali is really, really doing a good job of taking advantage of that fatigue. 13 second point, second half points for Ali Khalifa. Almost single handedly keeping the Cougars in this one. Here's McMillan. 
Eight on the shot clock. Toussaint, strong drive in the paint. And the foul's going to be on the floor on BYU. That's going to go on Dallin Hall, his first. It's interesting, Rich. Mark Ru Marka Pope's got a decision to make because the game has turned back around with Ali Khalifa out on the court offensively. The question is, when do you bring Triore back? Or do you? Pop left alone. Set shot three. And look at the work he's doing on defense as well. Khalifa again. Nice, nice job. Hall got away with a little discard, but they didn't call it. It's been that kind of game. They're letting him play a little bit. Khalifa's career high is 27. He has 21 tonight. Tech with the ball up to 320 to go. Top 25 matchup in the best conference in basketball. What a day. Toussaint looking for contact. And that's not a good play. They're not going to call that. You can't bail these officials out. Hall. See, Dallin never looks to score on that, and that gets him in trouble. Uh-oh. Isaacs is six for nine from three, Fran. We've been watching him for a year and a half. This is not a super talented team by Big 12 standards. All they are now is three and one with a chance to go to four and one. He's won everywhere. He's a perfect fit. And he's showing these, this fan base why they love this team right now. They call him Miracle Mac for a reason. He's a believer. And he's got his team believing in the Big 12. Hey, this post up, these post ups usually will be effective. But what they've done tonight in the second half, it's just bogged down the, Texas, uh, the, the BYU offense. I think they ought to sprace it and get the ball moving side to side like they did early. Ten on the shot clock. Now five to shoot. It's another low clock. Isaac's got his hand in there. It's a terrible And again. Decision. Yeah. And now there's under two seconds left for BYU to get a shot up. They're, they're, right now, BYU is afraid to shoot the basketball which is uncharacteristic of, of the way they played all season. To say the least, first in the nation in three-pointers made. Here's Robinson. They wave it off. He was out of bounds. Cougs need a stop. That's obvious. And for Texas Tech, keep it in Pop Isaac's hands and let him do some magic. Eight second-half turnovers forced by the Red Raiders defense. I'd use a little clock right here. Isaacs, why not? Now, what am I talking about? Just uh, give, give him the ball. A new career high, 30 points for Pop Isaacs. Saunders, and finally an answer for BYU. That ball went side to side, and Richie Sha Saunders took the first good look they've got. It was, they've been in a low shot clock most of the second half. That's the way they normally play. Just the second three ball of the second half for BYU. And Pop will go to the line. It's a young man, we mentioned it earlier. He and Richie Saunders, teammates at Wasatch Academy. Pop's been a USA basketball kid. Young man from Coronado High School in Las Vegas. And I'm a fan, Rich. You know, I know the family. His father is one of the top AAU guys on the West Coast. And he's got a huge heart, and he loves being a Red Raider. We've got our first ESPN Big Monday doubleheader coming up. R.J. Davis and number four UNC taking on Wake Forest at seven. And then we go to Allen Fieldhouse, number three Kansas and Cincinnati. Two teams coming off losses today. Kansas... Not inexplicably, because it is the Big 12 losing at West Virginia. Great job by 
by the Mountaineers. That's it. Hall, no good. To sock the rebound. I like the attack of the basket. Tech with their largest lead of the night. They were down 17 in the first half. They're up six now as we count down to one minute left. Last possession where they can play it out without fouling. The lob goes awry. Spencer Johnson leads the break. Stops and pops for three. I like that. That's what you got to do. Get out and run and take the first good look. Now, speaking of looks, Fran, they're going to check and see. I saw it as a three. They're going to look and let's change to a two-pointer. It's a four-point Texas Tech lead. I don't think you can play this possession out if it's a two-point possession. Throw a press out here. Trap it. See if you can foul somebody who is not a good foul shooter. I, that would have gotten Washington immediately. Remember, they have a really good shooting free throw team besides Washington. And that's going to go on Dallin Hall, his third. Nine seconds ticked off the clock. But more importantly, Rich, this is a team that is shoots nearly 77% as a team. The only guy that's under 80 is Washington, and he had the ball first. 53%. Sorry. Yeah, that's 77% that you mentioned. Tops in the Big 12. And it's led by this man at the line. Number six, Joe Toussaint. 86% from the free throw line this season. So it's going to be a one and one for Joe Toussaint. And he missed it. Still life left in these BYU Cougars. Down four after leading by 17. Robinson way off. Toussaint comes away with it. No whistle. And he takes it himself, but missed it. Oh, and I think we got a foul on BYU underneath. Joe had a choice of pulling it out or going to the rim. He went to the rim. He missed it, but he's fortunate. That BYU foul. Take a look. Watch the action inside. And, uh, and they got a foul on Dallin Hall. That looked like hand-to-hand -hand combat in there. Could have gone either way or no call. But Chance McMillan's going to shoot it. And he hits the first. Well, you see UFC 297 in Toronto tonight. The middleweight title main event. The main card begins at 10 Eastern on pay-per-view with the prelims at 8 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. To order the main card in English or Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Three ball, good by Hall. Got a foul. It's a three-point game. The shot clock is off. 23 seconds left. Dallin Hall wanted a foul. Thought in the second half, Rich, again, we talked about the start of the second half, but I also thought that they lost their poise on the offensive end, and they let Texas Tech utilize a tough, aggressive defense and really took them out of rhythm. Toussaint comes up and calmly cans the first free throw. BYU made 10 threes in the first half and only three in the second. And now you look at Texas Tech's three-point shooting, 50% for the game, 10 for 20. Robinson, nowhere to go, has to force up a three. Big rebound by Williams. And the foul is called, and Darian Williams will go to the line with a chance to ice this one. And they love it inside United Supermarkets Arena. Oh, they love this team. They put this team together like patchwork with transfers, some old overs. I watched them practice in October. I didn't think they would be where they are right now. 
the one ingredient is players buying into Grant McCaslin. Pop Isaacs could have transferred, got into the portal, and ended up anywhere. And uh, to see these guys come together is a credit to that coaching staff. Williams gets the first. That makes it a two-possession ball game with 8.4 to go. And it's academic now. Home teams in the Big 12 will improve to 24 and 10 on the year. A result of a huge 17 point comeback win for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They're now off to their best start in 22 years. Our final